Hi, I'm Steven Sashen from InvisibleShoe.com and on this short video I'm going to show you how to make your Invisible Shoe kits with either the 4mm Connect or 6mm Contact outsoles. So the first step in making your Field True outsoles is deciding whether you need to trim them or not or if you can just use them as is. And the way you do that is simple. Just place your feet on the outsoles and see how they fit. Now what you're going to want to do is line up your heel so that the back of your heel is about in line with or just barely in front of the back of the outsole and then just take a gander. You might discover that your feet really fit on there practically perfectly and you don't need to trim them at all. Um, you can see these are actually just a tiny bit large for me, but for something where it's just that little bit of extra space, I, I use these as is, just like that. But that's a decision that you want to make. Now if your feet are much narrower, then um, you're going to want to trim them and there's three ways you can do that. You can move your feet towards the inside edge and when you do that, make sure there's some space um, from the inside of your big toe uh, because when you move that your foot tends to roll a little bit to the inside so don't go right up to the edge but leave just a little bit of room so that's one option is having your feet sort of towards the inside where you're going to retain this inside curve and just trim this outside curve the other option the exact opposite move your feet to the outside and that way you're going to be retaining this outside curve and then trimming the inside curve. Or if your feet are particularly narrow, um, you can just place them in the middle and that way you're gonna be trimming all the way around. Either way, it's really up to you. Personally, I kind of like that outside curve the way it's already made, so when I trim mine, that's what I do is I leave the outside curve and I just trim the inside curve. Now, the heel cup, you typically don't need to trim, but if you find that it's especially large, if you've got a really narrow heel, feel free, no reason not to. And obviously, these uh, ankle holes are already punched, but again, if your foot is incredibly narrow, you don't need to use those. You can trim your own holes or you can make your own holes and trim that down. Again, totally up to you. We give this to you as a template. Many people can use it as is. If you need to make modifications, you can. Now, if by chance, when you ordered your shoes, you got one that's way too big, that's also not a problem because um, it's not like these holes are in some magic location. They'll work pretty much wherever they are and you can trim that down uh, as much as you need to. So that's step one is deciding whether you're going to trim the outsoles or not. Step two is assuming that you are going to trim them, let's, we'll move from there, is you need to indicate or mark how you want to trim them. Now, I typically just use a regular ballpoint pen for this, but that won't show up very well on the video, so I'm going to be using a Sharpie marker instead. And the way you do it, again, decide where you want to put your foot. I'll do the outside edge version just like this. Um, and then you're going to, what you're going to do, I'll show you with the pen, you're going to trace around, your, oh, you can't really see that very well, you're going to be tracing around your toes. You don't need to get um, right on them. In fact, you want to hold the pen vertically up against your foot and when you do that, uh, the actual mark of the pen is going to be about an mm, eighth of an inch on the outside of your foot. So you're giving yourself a little bit of extra room. And you don't need to get in between all your toes because um, you're not going to be trimming toe by toe. You're going to be making a nice curve similar to the one that you see here. So I'm just going to hold the pen vertically and go around my toes. That's step one. Step two is evening that curve out. You can see it's a little jagged and that's not what we want. So to even that curve out, I just kind of make a curve from point to point. Now from here, from the top of the big toe to that little um, it, protrusion on the edge of the big toe to that bump on your foot. You want to make that a nice even curve uh, and again give yourself a little bit of room because your foot will tend to migrate a little bit as you move just like that. And when you get to the um, place here where the ankle hole extends you can just take that curve and round that out. Okay, so that's step two. I think it's step two. Um, the next step is actually going to be cutting these out. And there's a lot of ways of doing that. You can just use a regular pair of kitchen scissors. Or if you're using the six mil, uh, our contact, that's a little thicker and you know, you're going to have to use a bit of, um, what's the word, um, elbow grease to use a regular pair of kitchen scissors. And if you do that, don't try to cut all the way down. Just make small motions so you're cutting just with the part where you have the most leverage. Or you can use a, a more aggressive pair of scissors. These are a pair of EMS shears. You can find these online for about two bucks. Or this is a pair of tin snips. We use these uh, when we're making custom made invisible shoes for people. I'll give you a quick hint about cutting things out. Um, cut clockwise, oh, sorry, cut counterclockwise. If you're right-handed, 
cut counterclockwise around the outsole and then if when you're done there's some jagged edges or things you want to clean up go back clockwise to clean those up just a bit of physics that has to do with the way scissors work if you're right-handed where that's your your best choice now I'm not going to actually cut these out right now, but let's just go on to the next step. So whether you've cut them out or you uh, are using them as is, the next step is to mark the toe holes. And really simple, you're just going to make a mark right in front of the webbing of your between your first and second toe. I like to make mine just a tiny bit closer to the second toe, not a whole lot, but just a tiny bit closer. And the reason for that, again, is since your foot will naturally tend to move this way inward, um, having the strap a little closer to your second toe will keep your foot from doing this, for example. So here's the toe holes mark. And the next step is punching out those toe holes. And um, we use a little rotary leather punch. looks like this. You can get this at uh, any hobby shop or craft shop. If you can't find one of these, you can. Uh, we have a number of customers who have used a 1 8 inch drill bit to make those holes. If you're going to do that, you don't want to punch the drill through. You don't want to try, try and push to get it through, but you need to have that uh, material actually removed. So um, hold the drill bit lightly, let it actually remove material. And I have heard from people that different bits work differently, a wood bit versus a cement bit, for example. I, I wish I could give you more information than that. Another option is simply find a leather or a craft, or, um, uh, no, leather or shoe repair place. That's the word I was looking for. And if you go there and ask them about punching the hole, they'll either do it for you or just hand you the punch and let you do it yourself for free. So that's the next step is punching out the holes. And after that, it's just lacing them with your choice of lacing. So that's all it takes to make your invisible shoes with our four millimeter connect or six millimeter contact feel true outsoles. I look forward to hearing how much you enjoy them or if you come up with some new lacing style or if you get to send us some pictures or videos or just your testimonial about what it's like to be able to go out and really feel the world.